Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson 8 on Multiplication of Sign Numbers. So we're going to look at, you know, what, what happens when we multiply a positive number by a negative number or vice versa. Or what happens when we multiply two negative numbers? Now the cool thing about multiplying positives and negatives is that at the end of the day it's actually pretty easy, right? And there's rules that you have to use. But we want you to understand where those rules come from by really understanding multiplication. It's easy enough, I think, to understand adding positives and negatives because, you know, it's this whole idea that, ah, when I add negative 3 to positive 3, they cancel out and I get 0. But multiplication is different than that because multiplication really means repeated addition, right? So today we're going to look at how to multiply signed numbers, why the rules work the way they do, and then we want to work on just kind of understanding the rules and applying them. But let's jump right into it with our first exercise where we're going to look at what happens when you multiply a positive times a negative. Let's do this. Here we go. All right, the most base element, a positive times a negative, exercise number one. Consider the following product, five times negative three. Letter A asks us to rewrite this product as the sum of negative numbers. Evaluate this sum. Now again, this is extremely important. If I had 5 times 3, that literally means I have 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. Right? It means I have 5 3's that are all being added together. Therefore, 5 times negative 3 really should mean that I have negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3 plus negative 3. Okay, like literally, I have three negative ones, another three negative ones, another three negative ones, another three negative ones, etc. Which means, in total, I have negative 15. Right? That makes all the sense in the world. Five negative threes combined all together gives me negative 15. And this should then lead us to a very fundamental fact. If I have a positive times a negative number, then the result is going to end up being negative. Because all I do when I have a positive times a negative number is I have just a bunch of negatives being added together a positive number of times. So a positive times a negative is going to always leave us with a negative. And notice, right, 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times negative 3 gives us exactly the same answer, except it's negative 15. All right. Now, of course, if we can look at a positive times a negative, we can certainly then flip-flop those and look at a negative times a positive. And that's our second case. Now, this is trickier, right? This is trickier because we have to answer a fundamental question in exercise two. Let's take a look. What does negative 1 times 5 even mean? Fill in the blanks below. Right? Now, you probably haven't necessarily thought about it this way, but 1 times 5 literally means I'm going to add 5 to 0 one time. That's what it means. 1 times 5 is 0 plus 5. Well, negative 1 times, negative one times 5 should then mean that I'm going to subtract 5 from 0 once. Right? So if 1 times 5 means add 5 to 0, negative 1 times 5 means subtract 5 from 0. So negative 1 times 5 is the same as just 0 minus 5, and that's negative 5. All right, simple enough. And we can extend this, right? 2 times 5 means adding 5 to 0 twice. So negative 2 times 5 means subtracting 5 from 0 twice. So negative 2 times 5 is 0 minus 5 minus 5, and that's negative 10. And again, if you're struggling kind of with this, think about sitting at 0 on the number line. And remember that idea of adding and subtracting graphically. If I sat at 0 on the number line and I subtracted 5, I'd be at negative 5. Right? If I move to the left, 5 units, then if I subtracted 5 again, I'd be at negative 10. And you're probably kind of getting old hat at this, right? right? 3 times 5 means adding 5 to 0 3 times, then negative 3 times 5 means subtracting 
Got to write a little smaller here. Subtracting 5 from 0 three times. So negative 3 times 5 would be 0 minus 5 minus 5 minus 5, which would put us back at negative 15. Now I just want to point out something, right? In exercise number one, we had the product 5 times negative 3, which was negative 15, right? And we just had negative 3 times 5, which was also negative 15, right? Notice that 5 times negative 3 and negative 3 times 5 give us exactly the same result. And this is consistent with what we've seen from multiplication throughout our entire careers in mathematics, which is that multiplication is what's called commutative. Any time that you multiply two numbers together, whether they're both positive, both negative, it doesn't matter what they look like, multiplication is commutative so the order simply doesn't matter. And that means that if a negative times a pos if a positive times a negative is a negative, then a negative times a positive is also a negative. Now, let's look at the trickiest scenario of all, which is a negative times a negative. Here we go. Exercise number three. Let's consider the product negative three times negative five. There's a lot of threes and fives here today. And what we talked about in exercise number two. All right, so let's break out of this for a second. You know, 3 times 5 means adding 5 to 0 3 times. Then negative 3 times negative 5 must mean subtracting negative 5 from 0 3 times. Right? Literally, this thing is telling us whether we're adding or subtracting and how many times we're adding or subtracting. So because it's negative 3, it means we're subtracting. What are we subtracting? We're subtracting negative 5, how many times? three times. So literally, based on letter A, we can say negative three times negative five is zero minus negative five minus negative five minus negative five, which is zero plus five plus five plus five, which is 15. And that kind of makes sense. If we, we already know that when we subtract a negative, that it turns into adding a positive. So if we're subtracting a negative five three times, that's the same as adding a positive five three times, which gives us 15. So no, remember, exercise number one, what did we see? We saw five times negative three was negative 15. Then exercise two, we saw that negative 3 times, ne that times positive 5 sorry, um, was equal to negative 15. And then this final exercise, we saw negative 3 times negative 5 was a positive 15. So let's summarize all of this into one large picture for multiplying signed numbers. A summary of the rules for multiplying signed numbers. Exercise number 4. Fill in the following blanks to make the statement true. All right. Well, what I'd like you to do is take a moment to think about this. Try to fill in each one of these blanks with either the word positive or the word negative, and then we'll kind of go over it. All right, we won't just kind of go over it. We'll completely go over it. Well, now, a positive times a positive, that's what you've been doing all along. Right? I mean, literally since you first learned about multiplication, you know, 2 times 4 is 8. You know, you didn't think about them as positives because you didn't have negatives yet. But a positive times a positive is simply going to be a positive. That's the way you work it all the time. Then, a positive times a negative. That's what we saw in exercise number 1, and we figured out that that was a negative. On the other hand, letter C, a negative times a positive, that's what we saw in exercise number two. That also ended up being a negative. And then finally, a negative times a negative, that was our final exercise, that turned into a positive. And what you should see right here is that when I multiply two numbers together, right, whether the result is positive or negative depends on whether the two numbers have the same sign, i.e. they're both positive or they're both negative, and when they're both positive or they're both negative, 
the result is a positive. On the other hand, if there's a mixture, right? So if one number is positive and one number is negative in the product, then the answer turns out to be negative. Now that is very different than adding and subtracting signed numbers, right? I can add a negative to a positive and the result could either be negative or the result could be positive depending on which one has the larger absolute value. But when you have products, when you multiply two numbers together, the result is either positive or negative based on whether the two numbers have the same sign or whether the two numbers have opposite signs. So let's get some practice with this because it's actually quite easy at the end of the day. Right? A little practice with the rules. Exercise number five. Find each of the following products. All right. Simple enough. Right? The first thing we should ask ourselves is whether the result is negative or positive. So in letter A, we have negative eight times positive five. Since one of the numbers is negative and one of the numbers is positive, the result has to be negative. Now, the question is negative what? Well, that's simple enough, right? All we have to do to figure out the actual magnitude or absolute value of the answer is just do the multiplication the normal way. We know eight times five is 40. So negative eight times positive five is negative 40. All right. Letter B, I've got a positive 10 times a negative 15. Since one's positive and one's negative, the result is negative. And 10 times 15 is 150. So the answer is negative 150. It's as easy as that. Letter C, negative 9 times negative 7. Now we have a situation where both numbers are negative. So that means that the result has to be positive. That could be the trickiest one, perhaps. Negative, times not, uh, negative 9 times negative 7 is a positive 63. Now, that positive symbol is certainly not necessary. I'm going to write down optional. Sometimes, though, I'll put it there just to emphasize the fact that we have a distinction between negative integers and positive integers, or negative numbers and positive numbers. Because in the next problem, we don't even have integers, we have fractions. But same song, fourth verse, right? I've got a negative one half times a positive three fifths. So when I have a negative times a positive, my answer always is negative. And then the issue is just, do you remember how to multiply fractions? And the answer is definitely yes, right? To multiply fractions is the easiest thing we do with them because we multiply their tops, one times three, their numerators. We multiply their bottoms, two times five, that's gonna be 10. And our answer is simply negative three tenths, right? So nothing changes there. Again, real simple. If both numbers are positive or both numbers are negative, then when we find their product, the result is positive. If there's a mix of the two numbers, one's positive, one's negative, their product turns out to be negative. All right, let's take a look at one last exercise. Because of course, we could end up multiplying more than two numbers together. We could, we could multiply 10, 20, tons of numbers together. All right, so let's make sure that we understand how to do that in exercise number six. Find each of the following products, show intermediate steps. All right, here we go. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that multiplication has these two amazingly great, amazingly great properties, which is that it's commutative, which means that you can flip-flop the multiplication. Three times negative five is five times negative three, right? Or you can also group the first two numbers that you want to multiply together. So for instance, six times negative two times four, I could do the six times negative two first, or I could do the negative two times four first, it's all up to you. That's called the associative property of multiplication. I think it's pretty natural to sort of think about it like this, right? In which case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do 6 times negative 2 first, because one's positive and one's negative. The result is negative. And then I'm going to go on and multiply it by 4. But now I've got negative 12 times positive 4. One of them's negative, one of them's positive, so the answer is going to be negative. And 12 times 4 is 48. Okay. What I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to pause the video and try to do letter B and letter C. And I know letter C has got four numbers in it, but you can still do it. Just group, you know, any way you want to. Keep track of what, what, whether the intermediate steps are negative or positive and keep using those rules for multiplying signed numbers. Take a moment now and figure out what you get for B and C.
All right, and again, it's up to you how you want to do it. If you've got negative 8 times negative 3 times positive 2, you can either group these two together first or these two together first. You could even group the negative 8 and the 2 together if you really wanted to. All right, let's actually take a look at two quickly. We'll take a look at two different groupings. So let's do this one first. Let's say we had negative 8 times negative 3 first, then times 2. Well, here I'd have a negative times a negative, so that would give me a positive. And then I would multiply by 2, and 24 times 2 is 48. I love the number 48, apparently. Right? Or we could also group it as negative 8 times negative 3 times 2. And if we grouped it in this way, we would do this first, where a negative times a positive would give me a negative. And then, since I would have a negative 8 times a negative 6, it would give me a positive 48. All right. Now, in letter C, there are lots of different ways to group it. Lots of different ways. Oftentimes, when I have something like four numbers multiplying each other, I like to group it like this. I'll tend to group the first two together and the last two together. I'll find both of those products, and then I'll find the product of each result. So here I'll have negative 5 times positive 7. Since I have a negative times a positive, that'll be a negative. Then negative 1 times negative 2. Well, now I have a negative times a negative, so that'll be a positive. Now I have negative 35 times positive 2. Now since I have a negative times a positive, the result must be a negative. And 35 times 2 is 70. So we have negative 70 as an answer. Okay, that's it. And again, you'd get that negative 70 no matter how you grouped these. Let's do a summary of the lesson. Today, for the first time, you multiplied numbers that were positive and negative together. And we saw what was a relatively easy rule that we should memorize, but hopefully you already have a sense for why it works the way it does. But the rule is simple. A positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. When we multiply two numbers together that have the same sign, the result always is positive. On the other hand, when we mix the product together, so we have one part of the product is negative, one part of the product is positive, then when we multiply those numbers together, the result is negative. All right? We're going to use that a ton, not just today, not just in the next lesson, but throughout mathematics. So make sure that you work hard on your homework tonight. For now, I just want to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.